Hello, Carl from Cabrillo here. Today I'm going to be talking about one of our most charismatic ocean animals. They're rarely seen here in Southern California, but they are part of our history and hopefully will someday be seen here again. I'm talking about the sea otter. Sea otters spend most of their lives floating on their backs. Obviously they will dive down and get their food and they can swim for long distances on their bellies but most of the time, they're just like this. They do come up on land sometimes, but they move awkwardly due to the adaptations their body has for floating on their back. Their spine is curved, so to keep the head up out of the water easily in this rest position. And the hips are positioned so that even while floating on their back, they can use their back legs to paddle through the water. When a sea otter gets its food from underwater, it'll bring it back up to the surface to eat. In the case of animals like abalone or clams, they will find a suitable shaped and sized rock and use it to crack these shells open to get to the food inside. Other animals like octopus or crab, they may just rip apart and use their teeth to get to the food. I mentioned that sea otters have a high metabolism. That means they need to eat a lot of food every day to keep their systems going to survive the cold Pacific waters. Some of their favorite foods include abalone, sea urchins, clams and mussels, and crabs. They need to eat a lot of these. An adult sea otter will eat 15 to 30 percent of its body weight every day just to keep alive. So that means a 60 pound sea otter will need to eat about 15 pounds of food every day. Now I know some of you think that you eat a lot and some of you parents are pretty sure that your kids eat that much food every day. But think about how much food 15 pounds actually is. And be happy that you're not a sea otter. Can you imagine having to pay those grocery bills? Abalone and other snails are a popular food choice for the sea otter. Being slow moving, they're relatively easy to get. However, abalone can hang onto rocks really tightly. The otters are good at using tools to crack the shell, or sometimes even being able to pry the abalone off by sheer force. Sea urchins are another popular food source for the sea otter. They're easy to get being very slow moving, and even though they have those big spines on them, the otters can use rocks to break the spines off and to get to the food inside. Otters eat so many of the sea urchins that when the otter populations dropped off the coast of California, the urchin populations exploded, which caused serious damage to the kelp forest along the Pacific coast. When they're not eating or sleeping or getting food, sea otters will spend much of their time grooming their fur. This fur is very important, so they need to keep it as clean as possible. Sea otters have the ability to reach and groom every bit of fur on their bodies, even the stuff in the back. Their fur hangs loosely so they can actually shift their back fur around to the front to clean it and groom it. The loose skin also helps them with their food collecting in that under their arms they have pouches of the loose, loose fur where they can store extra food or if they find a particularly good rock for cracking shells open, they can stash it in there while they're hunting. This is a piece of actual sea otter fur. Their fur is one of their most important adaptations to surviving in the ocean. Unlike other marine mammals, sea otters do not have a blubber layer. To keep from dying from hypothermia, which is losing their body heat to the cold surroundings, they have a very high metabolism, which keeps their body temperature high, and they have this luxuriant fur, which insulates them from the cold water. This fur is incredible. It is the densest fur of any mammal on the planet. In one square inch on parts of its body, it can have over a million hairs. Just to put that in perspective, on top of your head, you have about 100,000 hair follicles. On your entire body, you have about 5 million hair follicles. 
in each square inch on parts of this body, in each, and each square inch is each one of these boxes on this paper, there can be a million hairs on the sea otter. And even in the places where they don't have a million hairs per square inch, they still have about 170,000 hairs per square inch. So an adult male, large adult male, can have about 800 million hair follicles on its body. Since we only have about 5 million hair follicles on our body, it would take about 160 of us, 160 humans, to have as much hair as one large adult male sea otter. The fur insulates the sea otter by trapping air in between and underneath all these millions of hairs. That layer of air prevents the seawater from touching the otter's skin, so it loses heat much more slowly than it would normally, at least as long as the fur is kept clean. That's why grooming is such an important part of the otter's life. If the hair gets dirty, it can't trap air, and the otter will die. Ironically, it's this amazing fur that keeps it alive that almost led to its extinction. Sea otters and humans have a long history together. Native American groups would hunt the sea otter, and a sea otter fur cloak is considered a symbol of honor and prestige among many of these groups. When fur traders discovered the sea otter, they hunted them extensively, killing thousands every year and almost wiping them out. As a matter of fact, the southern sea otter, the ones off California, were thought to be extinct for a while. However, a group of about 50 had managed to find refuge off the coast of Big Sur in Central California. From those 50, the numbers have rebounded to about 3,000. The range is still limited, however, not being found much south of Point Conception, but hopefully as the population grows, so will their range. Though no longer hunted by humans, we still pose a huge threat to the sea otter, mainly in the form of pollution. Chemicals from our runoff, especially things like oil from leaky cars and improperly disposed of waste, pour out to the ocean in millions of gallons every year. These chemicals can be ingested by the sea otter as they clean their fur, causing internal damage and death. The oil that doesn't get cleaned from the fur will cause matting and the fur will no longer insulate the otter against the cold Pacific waters. We all need to do what we can to keep whatever runs into the ocean clean so that the animals that live there, like the sea otter and its food, can continue to survive and hopefully your children or your grandchildren may be able to see sea otters swimming off the coast of Southern California again. This is Carl from Cabrillo and our friends the sea otters saying stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.